This is good leverage for another Starship orbital attempt this year. In the one and a half hour long hearing this week, U.S. Senator Ted Cruz has put pressure on the FAA and the other regulatory agencies, such as the Fish and Wildlife Services, for delaying the SpaceX Starship launches and tests. Senator Cruz used his opening statements to express pride that Texas is at the forefront of American leadership in space, noting NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston and companies like SpaceX, which he visited back in August. The road to the final frontier runs through Texas. Cruz said he went on to reference a common criticism of the commercial space industry as a pet project for the ultra-wealthy given Musk is at the helm of SpaceX and Bezos being the founder of Blue Origin. But Cruz strongly expressed opposition to the review needed for Starship's second launch, calling the FAA's task of ensuring corrective measures have been carried out an entirely duplicative environmental review. When asked by Senator Cruz about the timeline for the HLS version of Starship, William William Gerstenmayer, SpaceX's Vice President for Build and Reliability, said it was hard to pin that down. The burden should be put on us as a private company, put on SpaceX, and let us develop at the fastest pace. We should be the ones that are driving the development, not being driven by regulatory oversight. It's, it's a shame when our hardware is ready to fly and we're not able to go fly because of regulations or re-review. Gersten Mayer said, We should be the ones that are driving the development, and I'm still reading the same fucking thing. Noting that SpaceX has been ready for a month to launch the next Starship test flight. Licensing, including environmental approval, often takes longer than rocket development. This should never happen, and it's only getting worse. Unnecessary bureaucracy that has nothing to do with public safety. SpaceX, for its part, has frequently said explosions of its rockets are welcome in the early stages of development, claiming it helps innovate design much quicker than ground testing. Gersten Mayer did acknowledge that in addition to regulatory hurdles, SpaceX continues to face technological challenges with Starship development. It's still not clear whether SpaceX can meet NASA's goal of having Starship ready for a lunar landing by late 2025. We've got a lot of challenges in front of us to meet the requirements that we receive from NASA, he said in brief remarks after the hearing. The only way we can get there is by flying, Gersten Mayer said. He added that SpaceX has had a hard time allocating resources amid uncertainty about when the launch license will arrive. We had people work extra shifts, we got the vehicle ready, then we couldn't fly, Gersten Mayer said, adding that SpaceX will likely carry out more ground tests, such as a wet dress rehearsal, as it awaits the license, but that regulatory uncertainty prevents them from establishing a more productive schedule. In response to this, the FAA said it is working diligently to attract, hire, and retain additional staff. In a notable statement issued Wednesday evening, Deputy NASA Administrator Pam Melroy said properly funding the federal agencies that regulate launches is essential to NASA's goals. As global interest and capabilities in space exploration continue to expand at a rapid rate, America must continue to lead in human exploration with the return to the moon under Artemis and the first human mission to Mars to search for life farther in the solar system, Melroy said. To be successful in achieving NASA's goals, it's important our regulatory partners have the resources they need to carry out their oversight duties and keep pace with commercial industry progress. Alongside SpaceX at the hearing were representatives from two other commercial space companies, Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic, both of which sent and wealthy tourists to the edge of space on suborbital rockets. In a remarkable display of unity on a day of deep divisions elsewhere on Capitol Hill, all witnesses and the subcommittee members that spoke Wednesday were in agreement that the regulatory framework facing commercial space companies needs change and warned against rulemaking that could hamper progress. Karen Shinnewerk, the president of CS Consulting and a former employee of both SpaceX and Relativity Space, told the subcommittee that current FAA regulations do in fact protect crew members as part of the vehicle's flight safety team and passengers have protections via their training and acceptance of risk. Given the limited number of private human spaceflights, three orbital and ten suborbital, the ongoing opportunities for thoughtful engagement between the FAA and industry, as well as the FAA's challenges with implementing its existing regulations, the original premise underpinning the learning period still appears solid. 
Despite it being the focus of much of Wednesday's hearing, the FAA wasn't invited to participate in the discussion. The FAA did not receive an invitation to testify at the hearing, an FAA spokesperson said in a statement to Spaceflight Now. In his comments to the subcommittee, Phil Joyce, Blue Origin's senior vice president of the New Shepard Business Unit, offered three points of suggestion to modify the FAA's regulation over the commercial space sector. Number one, create a more streamlined process to keep pace with industry. Number two, have Congress grant the FAA sufficient resources to keep up with licensing. And number three, allow the FAA more time to make needed adjustments by extending the learning period. Beyond the FAA, Congress should think broadly about how to build a framework for mission authorization. This should be correctly scoped and draw clear boundaries between ag agencies. We also recommend Congress designate a single agency as the hub for authorization of commercial space activity. Sarisha Bondla, Virgin Galactic's Vice President of Government Affairs and Research, said an extension of at least eight years would be their recommendation. And I completely agree, we should not be moving the goalpost just to move the goalpost. But now is the time, because we have data, we have operators, um, to discuss what that framework looks like. That's the important part. The learning period should not lapse without having a blueprint for what a safety framework looks like for human space flight so that um, we can look at what areas need to be regulated, what are the consequences of that, making sure it's still light touch to allow innovation, and also importantly that the FAA is resourced with the funds and the expertise to carry out that framework. The top Republican on the subcommittee, Senator Eric Schmidt of Missouri, and its chair, Kirsten Sinema, an independent from Arizona, both agreed the moratorium should be extended. They each also acknowledged that existing regulations, such as those that outline the process for obtaining human spaceflight launch licenses, as well as satellite licenses, need to be improved. In the end, we hope that the FAA will let Starship have another go at an orbital test flight this year. The Starship is designed to carry more than 150 tons into orbit and land on other planetary bodies such as the Moon and Mars, with NASA planning to use the spacecraft to land astronauts on the lunar surface as part of the Artemis program. Meanwhile, Musk wants to use Starship to dominate the heavy launch market and to colonize Mars. Starship and its booster have attracted customers from space-struck tourists to the Defense Department, which is seeking to use the rocket as a way to fly cargo anywhere on Earth in just half an hour. NASA is paying SpaceX over 4 billion US dollars for its role in the Artemis program with astronauts in an Orion capsule launched on NASA's own Space Launch System rocket, transferring to a waiting Starship lander and riding it to and from the moon's surface. Starship promises to be billions of dollars cheaper than the SLS, with each launch costing about $40 million compared to the estimated cost of $2 billion for the SLS. However, the design ethos guiding the SLS and Starship is very different. NASA builds space vehicles to assume perfection and then tests them to prove it, while SpaceX builds many prototypes and tests them to their limits and often beyond. And that's it for today's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.